Today I'm talking about lumber prices, the market, what is happening with supply and demand at the end of November 2022, and how it has been so far for this year, potentially what we might be able to expect for the next couple of months. Hello again everyone, Keta Kosman, publisher of Madison's Lumber Reporter, here to give you a wonderful update about what is happening with softwood lumber prices and the market as we are getting into the very much slower parts of the year where construction activity is slowing down usually into winter and as such lumber sales and lumber prices also start to slow down. And so here we are with the data that I have uh, just gotten for this last week of November and the lumber prices are down, but just by a little bit. Normally the historical trend has been a general downward from about Labor Day to into the end of the year. And this year we did have a drop in prices uh, for the softwood lumber uh, dimension lumber items after Labor Day, but then a leveling off. Now, the main reason I'm thinking why those prices did not continue to fall as uh, construction activity and housing really gets even slower, especially following the U.S. Thanksgiving holiday, is because there was quite a few curtailments and downtime taken by sawmills across North America, very much so here in British Columbia. So the uh, volumes of fiber across the continent are divided into generally three regions, the Pacific Northwest, the East, and then the South. And so the in Canada, the sales of lumber, uh, but about 65% of Canadian manufactured wood products is sold into the US. It used to be like 85%, but the softwood lumber duty uh, hammered us down, you know, and uh, the Canadians over the past 20, 25 years diversified specifically into Asia, but into other markets. And so now somewhere around 65% of Canadian wood goes into the US. 10% is sold domestically in Canada and a very solid 6% goes to Japan. That volume that goes to Japan is higher value, is your number one premium grade. Uh, doesn't even really necessarily get sold very much in North America. And so that is a, uh, by volume, much higher value for the mills um, as an export product into a market that requires uh, really good quality and uh, uh, is different from the number two and better, the standard construction grade lumber that is sold across North America. And so that's the Canadian sales. And then within Canada, almost 50% of all Canadian wood is manufactured in British Columbia. So there is a little bit more volume of lumber manufacturing in the US than there is in Canada. And there is of course a lot more housing construction in the US than there is in Canada. And so the US needs to import wood to satisfy the demand for building. And Canada needs an export market because we have way more trees than we do have people and houses to build. And so, I mentioned this, uh, d d the disparity of where the volume is, because when we've had repeated curtailments and downtime here in British Columbia over the past two, three, four months, that is a significant amount of the total. Okay, and so the different operators, the very large volume operators, the big publicly traded companies, and even some of the smaller companies have taken time uh, offline at their mills uh, within BC, other areas also have, have curtailed so that the volume manufacturer has dropped to meet the drop of demand that we usually get in this seasonal time. So the price of lumber stabilized about a month after Labor Day for about a month or for a few weeks. It was US $490 per thousand board feet 
uh, for a while there. And just this week we're printing down and I'm not surprised. And we're just down just a little bit, which means the supply demand balance, the agreement between the customer and the seller is good. And there is enough volume being sold to be able to say, you know, the price is down, but it's really not down by as much as it has in the past at this time of year when the mills kept running at their higher volumes while demand was slowing down. So let's take a look at some graphs and I'll explain to you what this means. And so here we have those benchmark softwood lumber and the one panel commodity items that I talk about all the time. The three main dimension lumber, two by fours, western spruce, southern pine, eastern spruce along the top there. And you can see what the change is uh, this week at the very end of November compared to last week and compared to one month ago. So that western spruce pine fir, the benchmark item, two by fours are now $475 US per thousand board feet down from 490 where it was for a few weeks after Labor Day there which is down $170 or 26% from one year ago when it was $645. The southern yellow pine is flat this week but dropped quite a bit from the previous month and is down $360 or 44% from one year ago when it was $815. Eastern Spruce is also down in the same way that Western Spruce is from the previous week, uh, right now at US $525 per thousand board feet, which is down also from one month ago. And that price this week is down $260 or 33% from one year ago when it was US $785 per thousand board feet. The Douglas Fir, quite an important item to mention, is uh, down now over the previous week and if everyone can remember there was a big strike at Weyerhaeuser in Oregon for about five weeks just now which uh, made that price stay a bit higher than some of the other items but compared to one year ago that Douglas fir green is down $170 or 23% when it was US $730 per thousand board feet. So these are the same items uh, showing you as a graph over a two year rolling monthly average. You can see how those extreme highs and then the correction back down lows are working out. So those swings are not as high and not as low as they were during 2020 and most of 2021. Seems to be moderating, leveling off somewhere in and around that between the $400 and $600 level. This is a usually slower time of year, obviously for construction activity and also for lumber manufacturing and sales as the industry winds down to the end of the year. And looking at this graph, it might be possible to start estimating what is the normal level of the range annually that the prices are going to switch between. And I would say somewhere between $600 and $800 per thousand board feet, depending on the highs and lows of housing. Okay, great. And so there's a very good illustration of the situation as we have it right now. Apart from the production volumes and the level of demand that I was just explaining is something very important known as the sawmill order file. So what an order file means is if someone were to call a sawmill right now and ask to make an order, how long is it going to take before that wood is put on the line to be manufactured? Okay, so during busy times, you know, in the spring when the construction is starting to ramp up and the builders are ordering their wood in advance of what they know they're going to be needing coming up, because especially the very large home builders, they like to have their wood on the ground before the construction project even gets started. Okay, uh, at those times, the order file might be five or six weeks. So that means the mill is quoting a price now for wood that they are not even going to make for five or six weeks and the customer is not even going to get for six weeks after that or even longer during these times when supply chain is still continuing to be messed up. Then when things are slowing down like now, especially really at the end of the year, like at the end of December, into the end of December, an order file might be three days or it might be prompt. 
if you call a mill and ask for to make an order, they might put it on the line that day. So they're quoting you the price for the wood that they're going to make right now or they're going to make, you know, that week. OK, so as I was explaining how about a month after Labor Day, the price uh, stabilized and was there uh, for that Western Spruce benchmark item two by four, number two and better. I talk about all the time at four hundred and ninety dollars. Uh, order files were about a month. OK, which is pretty strong. And that's what I mean about how the mills were fashioning how much manufacturing they were going to do in view of upcoming slowdown in demand for, you know, now. And this week we have order files two weeks, which is still not bad, but it doesn't put the mill in a very strong position to reject counter offers, right? So the customer calls up and they're like, you know, I want... 10 rail cars of this and six trucks of that or whatever they're asking for. And the mill will quote, we'll try to quote, obviously we'll try to quote a higher price because that's what a seller does. And the customer will come back with a counter offer saying, well, I'll, you know, pay this. And between them, the negotiation, one of the things that the mill takes in their strength of being able to keep the price up higher is how much of an order file do they have? Okay. So, I'm going to say that next week, uh, beginning of December and definitely into the second week of December, this order file that we're talking about right now for two weeks is going to shrink more and more. The important thing for industry folks is that the manufacturers, well, basically everybody, but really the manufacturers want to end the year with no wood in their yard. The lumber mills want to have shipped out all the wood that they have had orders for and try to keep their lumber yard as empty as possible. This is for tax reasons. They also want to stock up their log yard as much as possible. They want to do the investment in their fiber for the following year so that they have their cost of logs as much as they can, but their impairment of holding over inventory into the following year as low as they can okay that's why sometimes at the very very end of the year there's a little pop-up of prices because somebody miscalculated somewhere a retailer a builder a stocking wholesaler ran out and actually needs to make an order from the mill right and so the mill's like great i'll make it to you and i'll send it tomorrow but the price is going to be you know a little bit higher Okay, so let's look at some more graphs and I'll talk a little bit about where we are again right now at the end of November. So here we have that benchmark Western Spruce KD 2x4 number 2 and better item that I talk about all the time. This is produced in among the very highest volume across North America. So it's a good benchmark. Again, at the very end of November price uh, right now, US $475 per thousand board feet. And if you look at this graph and you've got uh, two year pure weekly prices from uh, the November of 2020 until now and the blue line at the end of 2020 and the pink line at the end of last year, the trend line matches quite closely, but for completely different reasons. At the end of 2020, demand was still going really hot, still very unexpected amounts of activity, both in home buying and in construction, kept that price rising at a time of year when normally it's leveling off or even falling. Last year, the demand for the housing uh, to buy and also the construction was not as strong as it was the previous year, but there was momentum being carried forward However, what happened in November and December of last year, people will remember the massive flooding and destruction of major highway and the railways here in British Columbia caused the supply to drop completely because the mills could not ship the wood that they already had manufactured in their yards. And so they could not manufacture more wood for demand as it was because they didn't have room in their yard to put any new product. In the same way, the Port of Vancouver closed for just over a week, almost two weeks, because there was nowhere to put any of the materials coming off the freighter ships. 
So this year, the yellow line, it does look like it's flattening off, which it normally would be, but it is similar in price, not as high, but not down to the lows that we had become accustomed to for those 10 years between 2006 and 2017, when U.S. housing was really being underbuilt and demand for lumber had crashed to a very low amount. Okay, fabulous. And so I hope everybody finds that interesting and illuminating. The lumber market is something that's very dynamic and changes constantly. It's never the same. There's always something, you know, if it's weather, if it's uh, fire, if it's storms, if it's a labor dispute, if it's transportation, many, many things impact, you know, exchange rate, what's the duty at right now, all these kind of things have an impact on forestry and on lumber. So what we do at Madison's since 1952 is we track all 500 individual softwood lumber and panel commodity prices across North America every week. And when we publish on Friday mornings, those are the prices for that week. There is no lag, okay? And our data is used by industry, by the sawmills, by the wholesalers, by the reloads, retailers, home builders, as well as, you know, banks, universities, government, other analysts, a lot of subscribers use the data, you know, that Friday or the following week to figure out what is happening with lumber right now. Okay. So if you like what you see here, click like on this video so that it will get recommended to other viewers. Click subscribe here on YouTube so you can see when I make my updates once in a while infrequently. But definitely in the caption is a link to the website and you can go on to the subscribe uh, menu and fill out a form where you will get a sample of the full list of these 500 commodities as, as I'm saying and what the price is right now. And we'll also send you the commentary 1300 words explaining all the different uh, species and regions and products, western spruce, eastern spruce, southern pine, studs, uh, MSR, panel, plywood OSB, cedar, Douglas fir, all of these things we talk about, what I'm saying here in the video, the order file, the volumes, the inventory, the log supply, all that kind of stuff is in the dashboard so you can get a sample have an idea of what it is for that week. And then if you like that and know that you can use it regularly, you can ask us to subscribe and we'll send you an invoice to sign up for the dashboard.